Hey everyone, Steve here and in this video I'm taking a look at this fusion wired fight pad for the Nintendo Switch made by Power A. As you can see from the box here, this is a D-pad only 6 button fight pad that according to Power A's own website is heavily inspired by the Sega Saturn controller. The one I have here is for the Nintendo Switch but there are versions of it for the Xbox One and PS4 and I managed to pick this up recently off of Amazon for around 30 Australian dollars. Taking a quick look around the box we have a picture of the fight pad itself on the front, another picture on the side, on the back we have a description of the features, it's got a removable faceplate, shoulder buttons, a toggle switch, a floating d-pad rocket design, a d-pad toggle switch, Alps action buttons, and an audio input jack on the bottom. Here's another summary of the features, inside the box we have the fight pad, three faceplates, a manual and a cable. On this side of the box we see the included face plates which are, although one of these might end up looking more like a grey, I'm not sure which one, and on the bottom we have a red Nintendo Switch branding. And here we can see that it is an official Nintendo licensed product which means that they're able to use the colours and everything. So this has a weird design where it kind of opens up from the bottom or this top bit slips off as you can see, so let's break these seals and then let's unbox this thing. Ooh, nice. There we are, can get rid of this top cover. Inside the box we have, this is probably the manual, the fight pad itself, nice braided USB cable, vacuum formed mold, I guess another cover for all these faceplates, white faceplate, nothing else inside this. And then the other faceplates are hard to get but they're kind of stuck behind this thing. There we are, so it's not really a black faceplate, it is grey. So by default we have the red and the white and the grey. So I've put off all the packaging to the side for the moment, let's take a look at the fight pad itself. It's actually a pretty big controller, nice decent size. Uh, the d-pad is definitely floating and nice and mobile. How accurate it is over time we'll just have to find out. And then here are the six main action buttons. Here they are from a profile view, you can kind of see that. They're not very tall, I think they do use membranes underneath so there's no real special switch technology going on there. And on the shoulders we have ZL and L, ZR and R, this is the place where the USB cable goes. Here is the toggle switch for the shoulder buttons, so you can have them as they are now and as they are labelled. But this top R button can then become C, which I really don't know what that means because does that mean like C is in the uh, right analog stick? On the back of the controller we have just power A branding and notices. Here is the headphone jack on the bottom of the controller. And then here we have the toggle switch for D-pad, left stick or right stick. To change the face plates, there's a little notch here, so I assume we just put our finger in there, take the faceplate off. You can kind of use it as a black controller if you wanted to, but it does feel kind of weird because there's a little lip around the whole controller and that kind of feels odd. Feels like you're kind of playing with some sort of prototype controller. And it's not that comfortable because your hands kind of dig into the lip here. Here's the grey faceplate, snaps on quite easily and they're magnetic so it doesn't fall out. And here is the white faceplate, which is quite nice. Might leave that on for now. And as I said, on Power Ray's website, it says that it's heavily inspired by the Sega Saturn controller, and they do say the words Sega Saturn, so you no, know, they're not really shying away from any copyright there. So, just for reference, I thought I would bring out my actual Sega Saturn controller. So, this is a Sega Saturn Model 2 controller. Anyone familiar with the Saturn knows that the original, at least Western, controllers were this weird more circular shape whereas this kind of extended boomerang was the way they were all shaped in Japan but in the west only came with the Model 2 Saturn. And you can kind of see the obvious inspiration here. The Power Ray fight pad is a bit wider than the Sega Saturn controller, I guess maybe they did that just to accommodate modern hand sizes and kind of the new ergonomics. But you do have your traditional six button layout, again perfect for most fighting games. You got your shoulder buttons for when you need them. Although the shoulder buttons on the Sega Saturn pad are micro switched and these are not at all it seems. Although they might be, actually I think they are, but just not as clicky as the Sega Saturn ones were. And of course we have the detachable cable, which let's try that now. So this is the cable for the Power Ray controller and we can see here that it does have a nice little spring lock. So you can't accidentally like yank this cable out and kind of disqualify yourself from any tournaments. So I'm just going to plug that in here and that is nice and secure to take it out. I guess I'll just pinch the cable. It is a bit stiff. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, I'm not going to bother taking this cable out. It seems quite stuck in there for the moment and you can see I'm pressing quite hard and it's leaving little dimples on my fingers and it's not loosening the, uh, the lock here that much. But that's fine. We're here to play with it, not to disassemble it. So let's put all this stuff away. But before we get started let's have a quick look at the manual. So it's got a nice Fusion branding on the front. Fusion wired fight pad by Power A. User manual, pretty self-explanatory. The setup instructions, D-pad switch is also pretty self-explanatory. But this is what interests me 
is this right alternate setting. This will convert the right shoulder button into a C-Stick smash attack from GameCube style controllers for use in Super Smash Bros Ultimate. So what does that even mean? Like how is that going to work? I'm going to use the switch button input check to see what it does there. Changing face plates and using a headset, pretty obvious. And there we are. Okay, so I've got the Switch tablet there. Let's turn it on. Playing the Capcom beat em up bundle for now. Let's plug in the controller into this little USB hub. Automatically recognized. Awesome. Let's just go home. Okay, I'm here at the button check menu. So we've got the D-pad, plus, minus, home, you can't test, capture, we can't test, Y, B, A, X, R, Z, R, R, Z, R as well here, L and Z, L. Now what happens if I do this top switch, which turns R here into the C-Stick? What does that do? Oh, I see, it just clicks into the C-Stick. That's pretty good. There's no reason why you shouldn't have this set this way because you already have R here. So this way, at least you get a little bit of functionality. I'll just leave that there for now, I guess. I don't really know what I'm gonna use it for. This is a fight pad, so let's play it with a fighting game. Let's start off with Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Might as well get as up close and personal as I can with this setup. And let's just do some combo trials, I guess. It's the easiest way to test out any controller, I suppose. I've already completed a few of Ragnar's ones. So let's go with Bang Shishigami. I may actually need to map my buttons. So let's do that first. Let's restore these defaults. So I've got A, B, C, and D. I've got Taunt and Special here, which I won't really be needing. Can I set, huh, interesting. I could set this taunt. I actually want to set R here to overdrive, which is here. Cool, should be good to go. So this first trial is crouching B, standing B, then down forward C. Nice. <laughs> I am a pro. What is these kunais? Oh, that's cool. How do you reset? Can't even see that. Jumping down C. Yeah, jumping down C, standing B. Nice, okay. Nice. Maybe I can play with this grip I've been calling claw, but doesn't really make sense to call it that, but whatever. Standing B, forward A, forward C, kind of sure you can B. B, B, A, C, B, B. Nice, that was cool, whatever. <laughs> I think that's enough combo trials for now. I haven't been really pressing all of these buttons on the fight pad, so it's really hard to tell right now. I have to say that the D-pad on this thing is actually pretty great. It's nice and responsive. There's a big area to press. You really feel like you're making those inputs. It's hard to do any accidental ones. And because it's got the left analog stick switch, I wanna try it out on Super Mario 64. Actually, you know what? Because of the weird mappings on the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack, I'm not sure how this is gonna work out. I think the only issues are gonna be C-Stick stuff, but you know, we'll figure that out. Okay, so I'm not gonna be able to do anything unless I switch this switch to left stick, so let's do that. Okay, so now I can move around. Although I can't walk because, again, this is only digital inputs, but that's fine. So I've got jump, got punch, I've got camera left here, uh, camera mode here. Is this doing anything? Crouch with the left trigger here. So I can basically only tilt the camera, but if I switch this to right stick, I can then move the camera, but I'm not really gonna be doing that. <laughs> so yes, Super Mario 64 is playable, but not perfect. If it was your dream to play Super Mario 64 on a fight pad, then I have good news for you. But honestly, this wouldn't feel right as a customary fighting controller review if I didn't try some Street Fighter. At least I'll be able to use all six of these buttons and see how this controller fares with a traditional fighting game control scheme. Okay, so first thing to do would be to set the controls. Okay, so let's set the controls on this fight pad. We have light, medium, heavy, light, medium, heavy, left, right, up, down, and start is minus in game and should be good to go. Let's just play some Alpha 2 but still with the Kuma. Ooh. Oh, this feels good. Oh my God. How do you throw? What is going on? I'm not used to Alpha 2 Akuma. Ah. Nice, okay. Oh God, please. Oh my, <laughs> I was trying to demon. Oh my, <laughs> there we are. I got the demon out, but then he just jumped over it. Ah. There we are. Eat it, Ken. All right. Let's see if I have enough strength to take this cable out now. Ugh, no, it still hurts a lot. What the heck? This thing's really in there. I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna leave it as part of it now. It's stuck there forever. All right, so that'll do it for this quick unboxing and look at the Power A Fusion fight pad for the Nintendo Switch. Again, there are versions of it for the Xbox One and PS4. Pretty neat fight pad, inspired by the Sega Saturn controller. Comes with two customizable faceplates. 
Again, I managed to grab this off of Amazon for like 30 Australian dollars, which is not bad at all. Nice Mega Drive and Saturn style D-pad. Got your six button fight pad layout. All the buttons you could need up here. You've got a neat little feature to let this be the right stick click in. I know that the PS4 one has the setting where this is L3 and R3, which is even more functionality, but for the Nintendo Switch one, it's not too bad. All the buttons you could need and a nice little audio jack on the bottom here. Anyways, guys, that'll be it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you could like it. And if you haven't already, please consider checking out the other videos on my channel and subscribing because there's a lot to see. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.